There are four kingdoms that are prophesied to rule this whole earth before Christ comes back. That is Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. Last week we covered Babylon. Now this week we're going to cover Medo-Persia, which is the second beast. The second whatever. Whatever, whatever it is. It's the second. Um... Thank you guys for your support and so on. And we're just going to get into this. So, uh, I'm sorry. I just kind of dozed off for a minute. World History Told by the Prophets, Part 2, Medo-Persia. We're going to start this off from Daniel Chapter 5. This is the story of Belshazzar. Now, you heard a little bit about Belshazzar in Part 1. He's a descendant of Nebuchadnezzar and he was ruling Babylon. And Daniel was also in Babylon at that time. So... Let's see what happened with Belshazzar. Let's start from verse 1. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines might drink therein. So Belshazzar having his party famine giant himself but then he said you know what i'm gonna go and get the golden vessels the holy vessel that nebuchadnezzar brought out from jerusalem when he took uh when he took jerusalem down and i'm gonna drink inside of it let's read verse uh three and see what happened to this guy then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines drink in them. They drink wine and praise the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood and of stone. Pay attention to this, is number this. They drink wine and praise the god of gold, of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood and of stone. Sounds like a lot of stuff that these preachers today praise, right? A lot of stuff hasn't changed, huh? We ain't too far from where we came from, huh? <laughs> Praising the gods of material stuff. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against another. So, so this fellow done drank out of the holy vessels of God, praised the gods of material stuff, and now God is weighing in on him, and he's scared. He, God scared him so much that the joints of his loins were loose. This guy filtered himself. God got his attention, for sure. He got him so scared that his knees is knocking to some brothers. You ever been so scared that your knees is knocking? I mean, if you see a hand just show up on the wall with nobody, eh, can't blame you. Verse 7. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing, and show me the interpretation thereof, shall be clothed with scarlet, and shall have a chain of gold about his neck, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Ain't that something? Those who was here in part one, when Nebuchadnezzar had his dream, who's the first people he called again? The astrologers, the Chaldeans, the right so this fellow called the same people his father called because in every generation the people who have the answers are not the people that the world listens to it's a common theme system for this so the people who is in high esteem the people with the big churches and all that if you know bible prophecy you would know that these guys cannot have the truth because the first of all the world don't like huh, the truth the people who have the answers are always the guys that's that are the majority of the times are always the guys that nobody pays attention to and the fakers are always the one with the most notoriety the pretenders then daniel answered and said before the king let thy gifts be to thyself and give thy rewards to another yet i will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation and this is what I love about Daniel system for this. He said, hey man, let your gifts be to yourself and give your rewards to another. A true prophet of God, you know, hey man, he don't preach for pay. Daniel come in and he said, hey man, 
Uh, yo, I'm still going to tell you the interpretation, but I don't want nothing from you. Now, let's see Daniel, the great prophet of God, break down this thing. Verse 25. And this is the writing that was written. Many, many, tikel, you farsen. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many, God had numbered thy kingdom and finished it. So while you up in here, acting the fool party and carrying on drinking out of my holy vessels, mister, I done numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tikel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. In other words, I don't put you in the balances, mister, and I weighed you. And you know what? You lightweight. You, you ain't even heavy. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Why the Medes and the Persians, though? Oh, because the Lord said, the Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. So since Belshazzar is Babylon, nobody else could have taken over the kingdom but the Medo-Persians, right? Because the Lord's word does not return to him void. So that's why his kingdom was given to the Medes and Persian and nobody else. But pay attention to what's going to happen here. Because here's the thing. While this guy is being a clung, the Lord doesn't give away his kingdom. Let's see how long it's going to take for the other people to inherit this kingdom from Belshazzar. In that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. In that night. So God didn't even give this fella 24 hours. God said, you know what? I gonna kill you this night for being a clunk. You know what? I, you, you know what? There's so much you could learn from the Old Testament. God killed him that very night. The same night he got the message, God killed him. Probably didn't even get to take another sip of the wine. But let's see what happened after he was killed. Verse 31. And there is the median took the kingdom being about three score and two years old. Sisters and brothers, pay attention to what I'm about to say. We, had, we have Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. All of these kingdoms was, it, it changed hands by war. They had a fight and somebody won. But the change from Babylon to Medo-Persia is the only kingdom that had a kingdom transition that was through inheritance and not by war. Do you see any war? Oh, I just hit my camera, my bad. My mic. What's wrong with me? Do, uh, do, uh, do you see any war going on here, sisters and brothers, in the scriptures? There's no war, right? Why? Because the kingdom changed hands by inheritance. That's the only kingdom switch that was made throughout this whole prophecy that was made by inheritance because God killed Belshazzar. And then uh, Darius the Mede inherited the kingdom. There was no war. Okay? It was a peaceful transition. All right, so you know, I just you know we 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 just have to point out those stuff, you know, just to be clear. But the thing that um, that Belshazzar drank out of that got him killed is the holy vessels, right? Now we're gonna show you when uh, Neb, uh, ne uh, ne <sighs> forgive me for me messing up his name. Nebuchadnezzar went to Jerusalem and took the holy vessels because Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar's father or grandfather, whoever, he's the one that took it. That's how he got it in there to drink out of it. So let us so let me show you in 2 Chronicles, Nebuchadnezzar going to deal with it on why and how we end up getting it. Uh, verse uh, 11. Uh, 2 Chronicles, verse 11. Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign and reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God and humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear by God. But he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. So this king, because Israel had three kings before we got destroyed. Jehovah Kim, Jehovah Kim, and Zedekiah. Zedekiah right here, he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, uh, his God. So God said, you know what? I'm going to slap you down. 
he rebelled and he even rebelled he, first of all he rebelled against god and he also rebelled against nebuchadnezzar nebuchadnezzar is the one is who set him up in jerusalem in the first place so this guy ne nebuchadnezzar if i butcher nebuchadnezzar's name one more time nebuchadnezzar put zedekiah in charge over israel i made him swear by god that he was going to listen and he still rebelled so let's see what god did let's go on verse 17 Therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees, who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion upon young men, or maiden, old men, or him that stooped for age. He gave them all into his hand, and all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king, and all his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. So now we're here. These are the vessels that Nebuchadnezzar took after he took down Judah. He took it to Babylon. And then after his situation going on with his heart being changed and all type of stuff. And the kingdom ended up going down to Belshazzar. That's how come Belshazzar had it in, uh, in Babylon to drink out of it and get himself killed. All right. And they burnt the house of God and break down the wall of Jerusalem and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where there were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia. Okay, let's reel this back a little bit. Verse 20, it said, And them that escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where there were servants to him, Nebuchadnezzar, and his sons, Belshazzar, until the reign of the kingdom of Persia, the Medo-Persian Empire, because the Medes came, after, uh, came before the Persians. So Israel was going to be in captivity in Babylon until the reign of the kingdom of Persia. All right, so we have Babylon, we get Medes and Persians. Babylon, Medo, Persians. Okay, the Persians coming up after the Medes. I forgot to say this. The Medes today is Russia. The Persians today is Iran. The ancient Medo Persian Empire today is Russia and Iran. Now let's get back to the video. This right here is not only in the Bible system, brothers. This is recorded in history, sister and brothers. And I'm going to show you. Because God says to prove everything. And this is a history book. World Scope Encyclopedia Volume 2. I had to buy the whole collection. And I have some more. We got to prove this thing. So let's go to World Scope Encyclopedia Volume 2. And let's read about what Nebuchadnezzar did. Okay. Babylonia regained its power and rose to a height never before attained. Nebuchadnezzar was his greatest king. He reigned from 604 to 561 BC, reconquered lost provinces, rebuilt canals, erected palaces and temples, constructed great aqueducts and lighthouses, and made Babylon the capital once more the greatest city of the nations. Pay attention to this, sisters and brothers. He conquered Jerusalem carried the king and a large portion of his subjects into captivity and later destroyed the Jewish capital. Is the Bible still fairy tale, sisters and brothers? After the death of this mighty king, the empire survived but 24 years when Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar were conquered by Cyrus the Great, king of Persia, in 331. Sisters and brothers, First of all, I'm going to point this out here. This is a, histor a historical era. It says, When Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar were conquered by Cyrus the Great, king of Persia, in 538. That didn't happen. According to the Bible, it said it, it changed hand by inheritance. But because the historians didn't read the Bible, they think it changed hands by war. Because what we used to as man is, is kingdoms changing hands by war. But they don't know. They didn't read the Bible. The Bible shows us that after Belshazzar was slain there is the median took the kingdom the persians took it from the medians the medians inherited it from the babylonians which is belshazzar you understand sisters and brothers but 
This is still recorded in history. This is a history book, sisters and brothers. When somebody tell you that the Bible is fairy tale, show them this. We about knowledge over here, sisters and brothers. We don't play. But anyway, we came into the thing, right? Uh, and it mentioned a key figure here, Cyrus the Great, king of Persia. We read earlier uh, that Israel was going to be in captivity in Babylon until the reign of the kingdom of Persia. And Osiris the Great run Persia, right? So um, let's go to uh, Ezra because we already, uh, right now we come into the whole thing with Cyrus the Great. Let's see what Cyrus the Great did when he was ruling because now we're in the Persian Empire. So Nebuchadnezzar, um, Belshazzar got killed. The Medes took over Darius and then the, the name Darius ended up turning into like a title. That's how come we end up coming up with Darius the second and Darius the third and stuff like that, right? But now we got throughout this lesson, this guy that you're looking at right now in front of your screen, he's going to continuously say Osiris the Great. But I assure you, sisters and brothers, the name is Cyrus the Great. I don't know this guy. I don't know who allowed him to step in front of the camera without getting this name right. But he's wrong. It's Cyrus the Great. Okay? Proceed. Osiris the Great, and he's king of Persia, because the Medo Persian Empire, even, even though it might sound like different people, is still the same kingdom, okay? I'm sorry that I'm talking too much. I just want you to understand. Medo Persia is the same kingdom. It got different rulers, Darius to Darius the third and Osiris the Great. It's still one kingdom, okay? So let's see what Os uh what Osiris the Great did when he was in power. Because history knows talks a lot about the Persian Empire more than the Medes because the historically the Persians is more popular than the Medes there again I'm talking too much I'm really sorry I hope uh, I hope you guys are understanding Let, uh, let's go to Ezra chapter 1 because uh, Osiris is in the Bible verse 1 now in the first year of Cyrus king of Persia that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus king of Persia that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing saying thus saith Cyrus king of Persia the Lord God of heaven had given me all the kingdoms of the earth and he had charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem which is in Judah this lets you know sister but this that God moves on anybody he wants to God already tell Israel like yo you're gonna be in captivity until the king uh until the kingdom of persia now osiris the great is the king of persia and he is so great he's saying yo the lord god had given me all the kingdoms of the earth because this is what all of these kingdoms gonna do babylon is gonna rule it all when babylon was ruling babylon ruled it all when medo persia is ruling they rule it all when greece is ruling they gonna rule it all when Rome was ruling, they rule it all. This is not no separate thing, system, but but anyway, I don't I, I don't want to throw you off too much. Oh yeah, it said um uh, sent me to build him a house which is in Jerusalem. So the Lord put it in his mind to do this. And let's see in verse three what happened here. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build a house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God, which is in Jerusalem. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build a house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. So Osiris is sending back the Jews and look at verse five. It said, then rose up of the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites. Why them though? Because those are the only three tribes that was left back after the Lord had the Assyrians take out the nine tribes. There's only three that was left back. Judah, Levi, and Benjamin. And they are the one that got sent into captivity. That, that's why they are the one that got sent back to rebuild the temple. Right? So what I really want to show you with this system, brothers, is that the Jews is getting sent back. Osiris the Great made a proclamation, put it in writing that the Jews should be sent back. Remember that. Now let's see how many Jews were sent back to rebuild the temple. Okay, follow me, okay? Now these are the children of the province 
that went up out of the captivity of those which had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away unto Babylon, and came again unto Jerusalem, and Judah, every one into his city. Now let's skip down to verse 64. I can't read on, up until 64 because I'll have you here for five days. Let's skip down to verse 64 and see how much Jews was sent back to rebuild the temple. The whole congregation together was 40 and 2,000 Three hundred and three score. The whole congregation together was forty-two thousand three hundred and sixty people. Sisters and brothers, not only did this happen in the Bible, this is recorded in history books. Sisters and brothers, read the Bible and read the history book. It's funny that they don't teach you this in school, but anyway, I have another history book, Gloria. Universal Encyclopedia, page 380. And let's read about this because Osiris the Great sent back the Jews and it says here he sent back 42,360 people. Now let's see if this history book that was written by an unbiased source co-signs this or, you know, shuts it down. Cyrus the Great reigned from 550 to 530 BC. Founder of the Persian Empire son of Sembasis, uh, sorry about that, the first, ascended the throne of Anshan in 559. Cyrus in 550 overthrew the Median king Estegis in battles. Why did Osiris the Great have to overthrow the Median king? Because the Medes is before the Persians, the Medo-Persian empire. Okay, so we're following, okay? assumed the throne of Media and established the capital in Ecbatana. He then ruled Assyria, northern Mesopotamia, Syria, Armenia, and Cappadocia. In 549, he conquered Lithia from Croesus and subdued the Greek cities of the Asia Minor coast. Now we're going to get to the main part. Look at this. As king of the universe, Cyrus proclaimed peace for all. Ain't that some? God God give look we just read earlier we said the Lord God is of heaven had given me all the kingdoms of the earth so he's so big he said yo I'm king of the universe ain't that some but hey let's go king hey pay attention to what we about to read now in 537 he permitted 40,000 captive Jews to return to Palestine So, there was, there was more like 200 and something off. The Bible is more accurate. <laughs> Ain't that something? The Bible is more accurate with the number. But the fact is, sisters and brothers, this is recorded in history. History says 40,000. The Bible said 42,360. But the number is close. But it doesn't matter. It's showing that this event took place, sisters and brothers. I love the word of God. I promise you I do. This is why we're breaking this down. Cyrus the Great sent back the Jews. I just want to show you what he did when he was in power. Now, let's go to Daniel chapter 7 because we're going to see where the Medo Persian Empire fits into this line of things. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. That is the Babylonian Empire from part one, Nebuchadnezzar. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. This is the Medo-Persian Empire. So the first beast is the lion, which is Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon. The second beast is Medo-Persia, which is Darius to Darius the third to Osiris the Great. But really Osiris the Great because he's the most popular one. Like I said, the Persians are more popular than the Medians. But all of them all together is still one kingdom. Uh, let's do a summary real quick. 
the, the change from Babylon to Middle Persia is the only kingdom that switch that was made through inheritance system with us. What we just read is the only inheritance change we're going to see. All right, for this whole lesson. I'm glad that you guys, I hope that you guys understand. And um, yeah, there's something I think I probably, did see. yeah, there's something that I forgot. Oh yeah, I have a chart uh, that, uh, that we have to continue. Now, here it is. Nebuchadnezzar is the lion, which is the Babylonian uh, image. And now we have the Medo-Persian Empire, which is the bear. That is the breast and arms of silver. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this, brothers. Next up, Greek. Thank you.